If your court file is a mess, then you're not going to want to miss the rest of this video because I'm going to give you six tips to organize your court file better than a lawyer. Hey guys, it's cold and windy and rainy today. That's exactly why I'm recording this video because you should all be inside organizing your court file. I'm hoping to accomplish two things by making this video today. One is to make you have a much more organized court file. And number two is that I'm trying to set off the fashion trend of matching your flannel shirt with your umbrella. So, you know, notice, notice what I've done here. It's pretty impressive, right? Hashtag flumbrella. In fact, I'll bet next week that if this video doesn't go viral just by helping people organize their court files, we're gonna see all the Hollywood celebrities wearing flannel shirts with matching umbrellas. I think it's supposed to rain out here in California for the next week, so we'll see how well it goes. Eat your heart out, Ryan Gosling. Um, if you're wondering, I grew up in Northern Minnesota in a town of 180 people, so that's why I'm entitled to wear a flannel shirt while I'm recording my YouTube videos. One of the hardest things that a self-represented litigant has to do is to keep track of everything that's going on and to try to find things when they need them. And you never really know when you're going to need a certain document um, or to pull a certain file. And it's just kind of difficult to keep track of everything because we're not taught how to do this when we first go into the court system. The first and probably the most obvious reason you want to have an organized court file is because it's going to save you a tremendous amount of time. If you know where everything is, then you're going to spend seconds locating documents and files instead of spending minutes or even hours trying to track down something. The second reason is because it's going to reduce your anxiety. If you know that everything is organized and in its place and easy to locate, it's going to reduce the amount of stress you have when you sit down and try to prepare for a hearing. I really like this bridge. It's, uh, it's really cool. The city of San Ramon did a good job. Do you know why it's so cool? because I am from Minnesota, and here it is. Check this out. Yeah, that's right. The bridge is built in Alexandria, Minnesota, which is actually very close to where I grew up. Okay, so back to our topic now. The third reason is that it's just going to give you more clarity of mind when you know where everything is and how it's organized and what to do in order to find it. It's going to just give you better clarity. The fourth reason is it's gonna give you more confidence because when you know that you have an organized file, you're gonna be less intimidated and less stressed out about how to best prepare for the hearing. And all of these things combined are going to translate into the fifth benefit of having an organized court file, which is that you're gonna perform better in court because you spent less time having to find documents and locate things, you're going to have to spend more time on actually preparing for the hearing and putting everything together, forming your arguments, and knowing what to do when the court day arrives. When you're in the courtroom and the judge asks you a question, if you can quickly locate a piece of information or a document for the judge, they're going to be impressed and understand that you know what you're doing and that you're spending time preparing for the case. And that's going to result in a more favorable impression of you and hopefully give you better results in court. Hey guys, back inside now with a warm cup of tea. Um, my finger is actually still lacking circulation, so uh, if I end up with an amputated finger because of this video, well, I want you to know what I've tried to do for you today. Oh, and also, do you see what I did? Put on a suit coat over the flannel because, you know, now we're about to do some business here. So getting back to the six tips about how to organize your court file like a lawyer, the first thing you're going to want to do is to put everything into different folders based on what kind of documents they are. And everything I'm going to refer to right now is talking about the electronic form of all of your documents. And if you haven't scanned all of your documents into electronic form, that's something you really should be doing. It's going to save you hours or even tens or hundreds of hours searching through your electronic documents than it will be trying to sift through a bunch of paper documents. Because when you're on your computer, you can type in terms and the documents will start to pop up. In paper form, you can't do that. You have to physically search through documents and if it's disorganized or you haven't put everything in chronological order or you don't know exactly when something was filed or where you put it in your paper file, it's gonna take you a really long time to locate what you're looking for. 
So the different categories that I put my documents into were number one, filed, which means any copy of a filed official court document. These would be the documents that were stamped by the clerk and are um, copies of the documents that are actually in the court's record. It's important to have this because pretty much any time you're dealing with a hearing or corresponding with the other party, you're gonna want to have actual official copies of the documents that are in the court file. The second category are drafts. Whenever you're writing a draft, you're usually doing it in Microsoft Word or um, Max Pages program. And you're gonna to wanna to keep those in a separate category than the actual filed copies because a lot of times the drafts aren't going to be the final version of the work, but there still might be some really useful um, stuff in them. And you might want to use some of that stuff and copy and paste it in future documents that you write. So keep all of those. Don't throw them away, don't trash them, but move them into a separate file. The, the next category is correspondence, and this would include any letters that were sent to you or you sent to the other parties or other counsel in the case. And it also might include any emails that you exchange. So in most email programs, you can take the emails and turn them into an electronic copy, like a PDF and then move them into the correspondence file. In a second, I'll give you another tip so that you don't have to actually do that. The fourth category is discovery. And if you're not too involved in a case yet, you might not know what discovery is. It's basically all of the documents that you have been ordered to produce by the other party or any documents that you've ordered the other party to produce to you. And so these might be things like bank statements or tax returns or other documents or letters from other people. <clears throat> the fifth category are transcripts. So if you had a hearing and you got a copy of the transcript or there was a deposition and you got a copy of the transcript, I would keep all of those in the same place as well. The second tip for keeping an organized file is in how you name the documents. You're going to want to name them in a way that lets the computer organize them for you. And the best way to do it is chronologically. So what you want to do is name it with the year and then the month and then the day and then a description of the document and to put hyphens in between all of those things. So for example, if I had filed a declaration today, I would name it 2020 dash zero three dash 14 dash declaration of Joseph Sweeney with dashes in between all of those words. And the reason you want to do that is because the computer is automatically going to organize it numerically in this case, and then alphabetically if you filed things on the same date. And that way, when I put it into the file with all of my other documents, it'll automatically show up at the bottom or you can flip the date so that your most recent documents are at the top, which is usually the most useful way to organize the file because when you're searching for something, you typically have a pretty good idea of about when it was filed. And when you're looking at your file, you can quickly scan through and see, oh, I filed it after this, but I filed it before this. And you can drill down and locate it really quickly. So name your documents with the year and then the month and then the day and then the name of the document itself. The third tip is to use abbreviations when you do the description of the document. And the reason is because when you have your file open on your computer, it, it's usually a window with a limited width. And especially if you're opening documents in a window that uses columns to you know, drill down into the file structure, then your window might only be an inch or two wide. And the shorter the document name is, the easier it's going to be able the easier it's going to be for you to be able to see what the name of the document is. If you abbreviate things like declaration as just DEC, a proof of service could be abbreviated POS. And if it's a proof of service from the other party, don't get that confused with PISA or order after hearing as OAH, then you're going to be able to see more of the description of the document which means that you're not gonna to have to try to elongate the window every single time you're looking for a document. And again, the reason for doing this is to just make sure that you can see as much of the title of the document in the available window as you can, because it'll help you more quickly sort through the documents. 
The fourth tip for organizing your court file is to set up a separate email just for your case. I didn't do this when I was in my cases and I really wish I would have and I saw a couple of other people do it and I thought that's a really good idea because a couple of reasons. First, it's going to keep all of your correspondence related to the case in the same email account. And so if you don't want to have a correspondence file for all of your emails, you actually don't really need it because you have your email account, which you know has all of your electronic correspondence in it. And another reason is because when you are using your regular email and you're getting emails from the opposing counsel or the opposing parties, it, it kind of causes stress and anxiety because you're trying to check your business email or your personal email and you have all of these emails that are related to court showing up and anytime you see an email related to court you get kind of anxiety and it just it doesn't make you feel good and so if you have a separate email account then you never have to worry about emails related to your case showing up in your personal email or in your business email and you can kind of prepare yourself ahead of time for accessing and going into your court related email account. The, the fifth tip for organizing your court file, and this one's kind of optional, but I would recommend doing it if you can, is to run text recognition on all of the PDFs. So when you file a document with the court and you get it back, you have to scan it and turn it into a PDF. And that's the official copy of the court record. And if you want to be able to search that document, it's not gonna be searchable unless you can run text recognition on the document. And you can do that by using programs like Adobe Acrobat um, or PDF Element if you're using a, a Mac. And those programs can be a little bit expensive. I think in order to get Adobe, you can pay a monthly subscription. I don't know if it's 20 or 30 or maybe $40 a month or there's a like PDF element if you're on a Mac, I think it's a one-time purchase of like $60, so that's probably a little bit more reasonable over time, but it still makes searching your file much easier because then you can read all of the text within a document and not just search for the title. And the sixth and final tip is to organize your paper file the same way you organize the file on your computer. So to use those categories for documents, filed, drafts, correspondence, discovery, and transcripts. And if you keep everything related to your paper file the same way you store everything on your computer, then it's really easy for you to do a search on your computer and then to know exactly where to pull the document from your paper file. Okay, so those are the six tips. It is still windy and cold and rainy outside, so stay indoors and get to work reorganizing your court file. If you like this, please subscribe to the channel or give it a like and share it with some of your friends who are in the same situation. Um, I hope you understand how valuable it is to have an organized court file and that I've inspired you on this uh, cold and windy and rainy day to stay inside and start organizing it. And even if you've started your case and it's a mess, just spend a little bit of time each day going through all of your electronic files and folders and organizing them. Um, this is what I did and it helped me locate documents really quickly and better prepare for what was going on in my case. All right, I'll talk to you later.